one. Okay, today we're going to take a few minutes and look at some of the features of our uh, Rossboro 246, the cool change. We've made a number of modifications to the boat since we bought it, and I thought I'd point some of them out. The, the boat is pretty much a standard uh, HSV version of the Rossboro. It's a two, uh, 2003 boat. We do have a, a, a hoist to put our dinghy, our nine foot uh, Zodiac on the top of the roof. We have radar and TV antenna. We particularly like the uh, fender racks on the bow. It's a very convenient place to keep them. And in addition to that, we have a, a windlass on the bow that we installed for the anchor. Put a second anchor roller on, so when we want to put a second anchor out, we have a place to stow it. One of the things that's a little unique about this particular model of the boat is it doesn't have a rooftop air conditioner. And that's because it has a water-cooled heat pump inside the boat. It's underneath the galley seat, more or less right out of the way. And that gives us the full roof uh, of, the, of the cabin to store things on. So we have a solar panel in the back and then the dinghy in the front, and of course the radar and the crane to lift them. Uh, I think that's the only things that are really unique to this particular boat, so now we'll go back and take a look at the and cockpit and be inside of the boat. Well, welcome aboard. Cool change. A uh, few of the things that we've got in the cockpit, which I think might be a little unusual, are this uh, table that stays more or less permanently mounted in this position. We find we can move around it very easily. In this corner, I built a special table that the Honda generator can go on with uh, the holes here so that it can't slide. We have an exhaust that goes out through this hole so we can run it even with the cockpit enclosed. Now we've got a friend here, Otto. He's just stopping by, so we'll pause the video for a second. Go ahead. Sorry for the interruption, but we had to stop and plan our cocktail hour. And of course, that takes priority. Uh, <laughs> I was talking about this little table in this corner. I'm not exactly sure what I said, but it does fold away when uh, you don't want it in place. But we leave it up most of the time, and it serves very nicely as a little end table when the generator isn't on it. In addition, we have a little end table on, on this side of the couch, uh, which serves as a lid for the bin. And we have two storage bins, and we have extra life jackets and hoses and things like that stored there. One of the features that I added to the boat was most of the Rossboros have the standard uh, shower head on, in the cockpit. And it's not obvious how you're supposed to use that, but one of the things we did was we put a uh, sh shower nozzle mount on this rail which you can adjust for the height and easily take off to use but we also have a four-sided curtain that goes around this area of the cockpit to provide privacy it comes down to just above the height of the seat it's in this area and you can sit on here usually I remove the cushion sit on here take your shower and then afterwards we just leave the curtain up until it dries out and then fold it up and put it away. Okay, so that allows us to really use the, uh, the shower and the cockpit very conveniently. Now, down there in the oh, water also, system. Thank you for pointing that out. Yeah. I almost forgot. Uh, over here I added two uh, hose bibs. The top one is for fresh water and the bottom one is for raw water. So we have salt water for rinse off and we also have fresh water in here. And in addition, since this is a, a, attached to the fresh water system, when we're in a marina, we can take the uh, marina water and hook a hose up to it and put it in, into there. And then we can have uh, running water in the boat without having to use our pump and deplete our uh, holding tank levels. Or not holding tank, but our uh, water tank. <laughs> I think that's about it. Okay. Uh, oh, one other little feature which was kind of kind of neat. I mentioned the generator goes in this corner. Yep. And the question is, how does the power get to the boat? And, and there's an extension cord that goes around the back of the boat, and over here it plugs in to a, an outlet on this side. And I have a rather expensive switch that allows it to operate for either the generator or from the shore power 
bib and it, it makes uh, the switch automatically shuts off the other outlet whenever you're plugged into one of the outlets so you don't have a hot outlet uh, on, on exposed that would be dangerous. So that uh, that's how the generator works. Okay, so we can do that. Uh, she's pointing to something, and I have no uh, idea. Oh, what okay. It is. I'm sorry. I was just wondering if you, how you uh, have the t two motors hooked together at the oh, back I, there. I don't think that's. That's pretty normal. The, okay. Yeah, All right. I don't think that's. Uh, Onward. <laughs> oh. Okay. Uh, now we're going to take a quick look at the galley arrangements. A few modifications we made. Uh, one of the features I added fairly recently is a bypass switch for the hot water tank. Uh, if you've used your hot water on the Rossboro, one of the things you notice is that if you're using the shower or even at the sink, it takes a while for the water to get the hot water to get to the outlets, and so you're wasting water. If you've got it in your tank, uh, it's not a good thing. So I put in a bypass by flipping this switch. The hot water automatically goes back into the tank and circulates and brings hot water up to wherever the outlet is, either the shower or here. So by now, if I were to turn the hot water on here, it would be hot already instead of wasting cold water while it gets there. Mm -hmm. And at this uh, sink, we also have a soap dispenser, a drinking water dispenser, because this water that comes out of here is twice filtered. All the rest of the water in the boat is filtered once. Now, on the, here we have a little sink insert uh, that allows us to uh, have extra counter space when you're not using the sink, and, and but it can't slide around because it's got a fiddle. So that goes on there. When we're not using it, it stores very conveniently over here by the, by the microwave. So that just pops on and off. On top of the stove, where I replaced the original top with a teak and maple uh, cutting board, and. It can, comes off very easily and it stores in one of the faces in the Rossboro that usually isn't used for anything. And I made a rack down there for that to store in so it gets out of the way. It easily comes off and goes back on here for additional counter space. Here, like many Rossboro owners, we have a microwave that sits on the counter. It's actually uh, fastened in place so it can't slide. But I also put a top on it. Again, uh, this gives you more counter space and we have two items that stay here all the time the coffee maker and and this little bin for small items but these have so they can't slide around they have little feet on the bottoms of them uh, and the coffee maker does too and then those little feet just go into the holes on there and so that can't slide and the coffee maker is the same way um, the other things in the galley area we added uh, a propane sniffer and solenoid shutoff for the propane tank. If you want to use the propane t stove, you have to turn on the propane. That opens the solenoid. And it also turns on the propane sensor so that if you have a leak, it detects it and, and sounds an alarm. And I put the sniffer for propane inside the cabinet because the hoses for the stove and the connections for the stove propane are inside that cabinet. So it seemed to me I'm not an expert, but it seemed to me that that would be the first place that a propane leak would shut off. Red light on here tells you you've got the propane on, so you, you know to shut it off when you're done. Another thing on the galley, we put again more counter space by putting a drawer here. I mean, it's not a drawer, but a uh, counter that pulls out, kind of like a drawer, um, <laughs> but can easily stow out of the way. And there's just, you know, like three inches of space above the refrigerator is being wasted. Anytime I see wasted space on a boat, immediately I say, hey, <laughs> got to design something for that spot. Uh, we swapped out the black refrigerator front for a, for a mica front because a light color means that when the sun is shining onto the front of the refrigerator, you're not heating up the, the, the front of the casing and, and depleting your cool, coolness. Um, by the way, I want to point out that the Formica, almost everything I've done in this boat, I've used uh, Formica. And this is standard Formica in the almond, almond, almond color. And so if you buy that for bay sheets or whatever, you can build things for your boat, put that, laminate it to plywood or whatever you want to do, and it matches perfectly with the, at least our fiberglass color. Not all Rosbergs are exactly the same, but you can usually find a Formica that'll match. And that's a great way to finish things off. This uh, 
over here on the dinette side, we also have a Formica finish table, which I built. One of the things I didn't like about the original table was the fact that it was very difficult to put up and down. And I wanted to have something that was more convenient. There's only two of us on this boat 95% of the time, so we didn't need as much space. So we built extra cushions that go back on each side. So we have kind of a uh, L-shaped uh, seating area, which is comfortable. And, oh, I might point out, over here we've got these two seats, and of course that allows you to seat, sit sideways, and the reason we do that is because when we're viewing TV, that's where we sit, one on each side, and we have the TV up on this area. This uh, pops down, and there's the TV. It runs off an antenna on the roof, and we use that for DVDs and... Uh, regular broadcast TV and again it easily stows away so back to the uh, dinette um, we've got the cushions that make it nice but one of the things about this table is that it very easily folds up out of the way you put it up like that so you have over here a safety strap not sure where the safety is. yeah safety strap here that can go on to there so that it can't accidentally fall down and this table leg easily removes. I spent about a year finding this unique hinge that comes on and off like that. We can store the leg, and that way if we're making this up into a bed, the, the leg isn't in your way. We also have the ability uh, to, to make this up into a bed, just like the original one. It's a little narrower because of this cabinet, but this cabinet is invaluable. Uh, it allows for storage, we put pots and pans in the bottom, on the top shelf for snacks and other uh, supplies. But again, it's a convenient place for stowing things. It leaves enough space so that when you put these two backs on top of a filler that goes in here, you have uh, a bed that's wide enough for one person to sleep on. Of course, just like the traditional uh, bed arrangement with the dinette, this, bunk, this cushion goes down inside the space under the helm station. And by the way, that air conditioner that I was telling you about before is down on the floor underneath this area, so it's completely out of the way. Uh, I'm trying to think if we have anything else in over here. Uh, okay, yeah, very good time to point out the fact that we wanted to have privacy in the boat. We also wanted to be able to block the sun because it's often coming in here with so many windows you have unfortunately sometimes too much sun so we install regular conventional uh, shades that come down and the thing that's not conventional is that they have magnets in the bottom hem so they stay against the wall and they don't swing around but easily uh, clipped off it's the back up of course they go up behind this valence that is custom built and that goes all the way around the sides and the back of the boat to hide the blinds and uh, give it a little more of a finished finished look to the boat. A lot of the things that, that we've done to the boat are just to make it look a little more finished than the traditional uh, Rossboro, which is very functional but not always uh, the most attractive. So the blinds are, go up like that. Okay, while we're here, we might as well just continue right on to the helm station. Uh, a few of the things that I did here, uh, we had the tradition, the standard old spoked wheel. Of course, if you have the metal wheel, you don't have this problem. But if you've got the wood spoked wheel, these things are pocket catchers. Uh, the number of times I tried to go in and out of that door and pop my pocket on these spokes, I said something's got to change here. So I built a, key, a teak uh, rim to go around the wheel. And that was quite a fun project. You can imagine what it takes to, to make this up into six different pieces to go on there. But no more catching pockets on the wheel, and I, I really like it this way for, for steering. Uh, some of the other things at the helm station, which are, are not standard, are over here we have the controller for the inverter. We have a 2 kilowatt inverter that you can just turn on and off at that point. And over here uh, we have the controls for the windlass, standard up and down control, and we also have a remote, uh, wireless remote, uh, yeah, a wireless remote for the windlass. But an expensive item, but I think invaluable, is this item right here, which is a road counter. 
it keeps track of how much chain you have in or out to the nearest foot. So when I bring it, when I want 60 feet of chain, I just put 60 feet of chain. When that reads 60, that's what I've got out. And when I'm bringing it back up, it counts down so you know exactly when it's cleared the bottom, when it's cleared the water, and when it's going to come back up into your roller. So that's, like I said, expensive. I think it was around $350, but I wouldn't do without it. Down here, another nice feature for monitoring your batteries is the Xantrex link light. That keeps track of the voltage of both of your battery banks, keeps track of the amperage flow in and out of the batteries, and sh shows you when they're, when they're full. So you know exactly your battery state. Right now they're full because we're at a marina. Um, I don't think there's really anything else in this area. Up here we have a custom console. So I've seen several boats that have that. Really like the idea, so I built this one. Again, this is all for mica, laminated onto wood to build these structures. And we have a little uh, chart storage area, standard instruments, and over here the DVD player and the uh, AM FM uh, radio. I don't think there's anything else unique in this area. Oh, yeah, speakers. The speakers are mounted in this console as well, and also a couple of fans that uh, work well for getting the fog off the windshield. Okay. I think that's about it for the main cabin. Can you think? Go. We made a number of modifications to the V-berth area, which I really like. Uh, the standard, the traditional Rossboro cushion arrangement, I, I just... not. I, 100% sure, but I didn't like the idea. Ours had solid boards on the bottom of the cushions that made them heavy and, and awkward to move around. So I took them out and put in two standard triangular V-birth cushions. These are five inch cushions plus two inches of memory foam, extremely comfortable. And then there's an insert there that goes into this area when you're making it up to a bed. Instead of having this open all the way up like like Rossboro's traditionally do, I block this area off and again put in more storage in here for towels and, and uh, bags and things like that. So that just gives you again a little extra storage, which I really like. Again, Formica makes it match the rest of the boat. Uh, this little cubby hole down here, ours had a funny white board on the front of it with a round hole in it and if anybody knows what that was supposed to be used for I'd love to know but I took that off and made it a little more accessible the other thing that we have on this boat because we have the smaller hanging locker is this, there was a little space back in here and again as I said I hate wasted space so we made another little cabinet in there uh, to store some of the bathroom items and another item I really like is over here it's a little hard to see but I have a meter that shows your current voltage and your current amperage in and out of the boat. So that uh, if you're on a 30 amp system, you can see exa exactly how many amps you're drawing and when you're going to overload your system. So it's very handy to have. It gets, goes off when you turn off the main power. But when you, there it is. Um, okay, I think now we can... Uh, oh, <laughs> sure. Got a, a, a uh, standard... Uh, covers on the sides again i it is for attractiveness I, I wanted to have those enclosed so i put sliding uh doors on each side i hope there's nothing in here i don't want to show but these allow you to easily get into the lockers but uh hide everything when you're when they're closed up in the front again this was an area that was wasted as far as i was concerned so i built this cabinet and we have two uh, uh louvered doors to get into there. It's not a large area, but on a boat you have a lot of small things that need to be tucked away. And as you no doubt noticed, we have everything pretty much tucked away. Still allows you though to get to the anchor locker and we can open that door in no trouble and um, get to the anchor lines if we need to. Although for remarkable, for four years we've had that windlass and I've never once had to uh, untangle the line or the chain. It seems to work extremely well. I think uh, I think that's about it for the V-berth area. Now we're going to take a quick look at the at the head. Uh, probably one of the parts of the boat that I I think is a nice nicest modification is that uh, we 
build a cabinet built into here with a little shelf above it. Again, a little more storage for little things um, and a shelf up above and also an extra outlet or receptacle rather on, on this side and made a custom sliding sink that can come out over the toilet and you've got their water soap dispenser very handy to use up here when you're done with it you just slide it back under and latch it the tvs in the uh... oh no this is here's something that kind of unique um, everybody's got a holding tank on their boat but you always want to know how much is in it so i came up with the idea of using a standard backup camera <laughs> For a, for a vehicle you can buy with one of these cameras and, and a display for about $25, $30. So I can turn this on and I can see exactly how much water we're about half full, a little less than half full with our black water tank right now. So that is a camera and an LED light that allows us to see the black water tank. We also allows us to view the uh, water tank that's in the back of the boat, but it, uh, that's not working very well right now. So I need more light back there before I can see it well. But you get the idea that you've got the camera, two cameras and a display that allows you to check your levels. And of course, that's the rest of the wiring display, which I've tried to keep fairly neat. Uh, down know. in the uh, bottom of that, when, uh, people have asked about it. I've got the uh, pump for the uh, auto helm, and that turned out to be a nice place to mount that. Okay, uh, for the head area, a lot of people are concerned that it's not enclosed. Some people have a door on here, but I've heard stories about those being thrown overboard or stored in the attic. Uh, most people these days have a curtain on it, and that's reasonable, but there are a couple of problems with the standard curtain. Our standard curtain came around in a loop like this, and that's fine, except if you're in the sleeping together, two people in the V-berth, which is the way we sleep, uh, when one person gets up to use the bathroom, it's very difficult to uh, get privacy. So we added a curtain on this side that actually comes all the way around this way and closes off the V-berth area so that if you're in the head, you've got complete privacy that way. You don't even need to close the other curtain. If at night or in the daytime unless there's somebody out in the cut in the cabin but if there is somebody in the cabin as well and you want privacy from them then you close off this curtain and you've got complete privacy in the head area it's just curtains of course and not a door but it works <laughs> extremely well and we're both uh, quite happy with that arrangement so i'll just button this up and we'll stop for now Okay, I hope you've enjoyed this short trip through the cool change, looking at some of the modifications we've made. Uh, I've enjoyed having you with us. If you have questions, would like a little more information about some of the things we've done, I'd be happy to answer questions. Uh, send me an email or a text, and I'll try to get back to you.